Rambler. I was injured in combat while fighting in Afghanistan. And I'm here to tell you about the Ability One program. A program that helps about 40,000 people like me. I grew up, people like me. I grew up in San Mateo, California and graduated from high school in 1998. I had seen movies like Platoon and Full Metal Jacket and I thought to myself that I would like to be in the U.S. Army one day. I admired their toughness and discipline. I also wanted a better life for myself. I thought the Army would provide me with new opportunities to make my life better, so I enlisted in the California Army National Guard. I went to basic training at Fort Seal, Oklahoma. It was the hardest 15 weeks of my life. When I finally graduated, I was proud and relieved, but I knew there was a lot of hard work in front of me. From Fort Seal, I went to Fort Lenwood in Missouri for truck driving training. I came home to San Mateo and worked, worked a full-time job while doing my National Guard duties. My company knew that we would be called to go to Afghanistan or Iraq sooner or later. In October 2005, the Army was looking for volunteers to go over, so I volunteered. I got on the plane in January of 2006, and I was eager to get over there and start my time. My family was happy and proud and telling me to be careful. I was ready to do what I had been trained to do. I was proud to be going over there. My company, the 145th Engineer Company, was stationed in Far Salerno, Afghanistan. It's an urban area and it's known as an Al-Qaeda training ground and Taliban hotspot. There's a lot of stuff going on there. On my second day there, a rocket exploded 100 feet away from me. That's when it really sunk in that this was for real, that this was in a video game. I had three different weapons that I carried with me every time I left the FOB, an M16 gun, a 50 caliber, and an M240 Bravo, which is mounted on top of a uh, Humvee. We were doing security-related missions. We drove a Humvee looking for roadside bombs and IEDs and clearing them away to make the roads safe for troops that were leaving the FOB for that day. We would find about three of these IEDs a week. It was called a uh, RCP, or Rack Clearing Package Group. Then we would watch the locals to find out who was spying on us and reporting our locations. We would also work on the guard tower for 30 days at a time in the quick response unit. If we got rocketed on base, the person in the guard tower would look for, look for who was transmitting our position. Also, the reason I'm here speaking to you today is because of something that happened on June 6, 2006. I was riding in the back of a home view with my roommate. It was a three-vehicle convoy. We were on our way coming back from the border of Pakistan and Afghanistan. We saw a station wagon and I told the driver to go around him. The station wagon drove straight towards us and blew himself up. I hit my face and I was unconscious for about 30 seconds. <clears throat> I woke up and my nose was bleeding and there was another rocket exploding on the hood of the car behind us. <clears throat> and the guys behind us were burned and hanging out of the Humvee. There were more rockets shooting at us and the enemy with guns shooting at us. And they dropped their guns and started running away. I ran to the Humvee behind us and grabbed two of the guys who were burned and put them in my Humvee where they were safe. Then we called in a medevac. While we pulled security for the wounded, while I was doing this, I got shot at twice over my head and once by my legs. Once I got the guys safe in the Humvee, I started looking for the shooters. They were gone. So I went back to prepare for the medevac helicopter to land. The guys who were injured were treated and recovered. They were active duty and I was National Guard, so I was proud that I could help an active duty uh, soldier because I was a National Guardsman and they always made fun of us. <laughs> I found out later that one of the guys I helped came back to Iraq for another tour after his burn team. I am proud to be a part of a group of such brave men. A few months after this incident, I got presented with a combat action badge. This is a badge provides special recognition to soldiers who personally engage the enemy, or are engaged by the enemy during combat operations. It's decorated with a bayonet and a grenade to symbolize active combat and an oak wreath to re represent strength and loyalty. It's an honor to wear this badge. It says that I've been to war and gotten recognized for doing my job. This is something special, but I have other reminders too. It was soon after this attack that I started realizing that something was not right. Anxiety was turning me into a different person also, when I found out that my grandmother had a stroke while I was deployed, I could not cope with the stress any longer. In the past, I was seen as a leader and a good soldier. 
I wasn't acting like myself. I wonder what is what is happening to you. I felt out of control. But I wasn't the only one. Everyone has high anxiety over there. And it comes out in different ways. Out of about 2,000 soldiers on the fog, we had about four to five suicides in one year. I came home on March 3rd, 2007. I brought home some physical and mental scars. On the physical side, I have permanent hearing loss and headaches every day. A shrapnel scar on my thigh. Cartilage problems with my knee from running and strain injury in my back from lifting. Like thousands of other soldiers coming home, I also brought home some mental injuries and illness. I have something called traumatic brain injury or TBI. TBI occurs when a sudden trauma causes damage to the brain. Symptoms of TBI can be mild, moderate, or severe. Basically, I have brain damage. Some common disabilities associated with TBI are problems with thinking, memory, reasoning, sight, hearing, touch, taste, smell, expression, and understanding, depression, anxiety, personality changes, and afraid to interact with society. I've also been diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. The National Institute of Mental Health defines PTSD as an anxiety disorder that can develop after exposure to a terrifying event or ordeal, in which great physical harm occur. Traumatic events that may trigger PTSD include violent personal assaults, natural or human-caused disasters, accidents, or military combat. Common symptoms are leaving the event, avoidance, feeling numb, delusions or hallucinations, disorientation, and memory loss. I have 100% disability rating for PTSD and 60% for my TBI, traumatic brain injury. So I have about 160% disability rating. The PTSD and TBI has been the hardest challenge for me so far. Some of you may know other soldiers with PTSD or TBI. A lot of soldiers have difficulty talking about their PTSD. I will give you some examples of what it's been like for me. In Afghanistan, you see trucks destroyed by, by bombs, trucks just like the one you're in, driving over the same roads you drive every day. Threats of great physical harm are part of your day-to-day of your -day life, and hyper-awareness is part of the job. When you're working security, feeling numb helps you cope in a wartime, but it is very strange to come home and not able to snap out of it. I used to be a truck driver, but now I have trouble driving my own car. I am scared of big cars, small cars, and motorcycles. I am constantly thinking that someone is going to blow up that car, especially when I'm in traffic. Or if I'm in traffic and someone walks in the crosswalk, I think they're going to run at me and blow up. I constantly look in the rearview mirror because I think someone is going to get in my car and do harm to me. When cars drive close behind me, I think they're going to explode. I can't handle loud noises of being out on the sunny days because it always triggers my headaches. I was on guard duty one day in Afghanistan at about 5.30 in the morning. A little girl, about 10 to 12 years old, well, she looked like she was 10 to 12 years old, came to the line outside of the base to come to work. She was in line with the other locals, waiting to be searched to come inside. While I was looking at her from our guard tower, she exploded, killing about 12 to 20 people around her. I was in shock because the bomb was so loud. It sounded like an atomic bomb. That might have been why I have permanent hearing loss. Now today I get flashbacks to that scene when I'm around my little sister or other little kids. I feel nervous around little children. I try to tell myself I'm not there anymore, I am here. I try to control it, I try to remind myself the difference between fantasy and reality. I should be happy that I made it back alive, but like many returning veterans, I struggle with what they call survivor's guilt. I wonder why I made it back alive when so many others didn't. I have to go to the doctors about two times per month to deal with the symptoms. I take four different medicines to control the symptoms. Despite, despite the hardship I face, I love the Army. It made me who I am today. They treated me really well. They fed me, put clothes on my back, gave me hot shower and TV and internet, and had events to keep my morale up. I visited places all over the world and met so many different people of all walks of life. I got to escort high-ranking officials when my grandmother had a stroke. They put me on emergency leave and sent me to see her right away. When I saw the different armies from other countries over there, I thought, I'm so proud to be with the U.S. Army. I didn't want to leave the Army, but I had to. I had to medically retire from the military on February 13, 2009. I was uh, depressed. I was doing a job I liked. I was qualified and good at my job. 